GoPro Hero 9 Black versus the GoPro Hero 10 Black. Let's do a quick side by side here. I've got some really cool footage for you guys to check out. Then come on back and we're going to figure out which one should you buy. Let me know in the comments right now what you think so far. There's a combination of 5K30, 4K60, 2.7K 120, and also 4K 120 on the GoPro Hero 10, which is this camera, and the GoPro Hero 9, which is this camera. And all of this is the onboard audio, no mics. It's just two cameras on a mount. think cool amazing that's all of the footage between the gopro hero 9 black and the gopro hero 10 i'm going to get into this momentarily about which you should buy or which you should even think about buying at that cannonball run probably was there about nine ish and we left around 11 so give or take two hours and this was on one battery i brought an extra one but i didn't change it one battery that was it and it lasted for the whole lot majority of the footage was 4k 120 and here's the thing when this was at 1% on 4K 120, when I dropped it into 5K 30, which was going up a res, but down frame rates, it went back to 20%. So that's kind of cool that if you are stuck and if the bottom changed the resolution and the battery adapts, obviously, dynamically, to the power that's needed. Now, the footage out of the GoPro Hero 10 Black does look really, really good. You know what, if you were gonna buy one GoPro or the other, which one would you get? You got the extra specs in this, you got the extra power in this, the 5K60, the 4K120. And the other thing is this GP2 chip works really well, as I spoke about earlier on. The screen is a night and day difference between the screen, which to be honest is not a good experience in GoPro's behalf, don't freak out and write another million comments, but that's the way it kind of should be. We're used to snappy materials, snappy gadgets, snappy everything. It's until you use the 10 that you don't realize how bad the 9 was. And the 9 was appalling out of the box for touchscreen. Firmware updated kind of fixed that. But yeah, anyway. You do have overheating issues. Now, on the day that I was there, it wasn't the warmest day in the year hey, we're in Ireland. But it did get very warm. Not once did it shut down. Now, obviously, there's an airflow going back and forth. This camera was turned on, it was turned off, record, stop, start. So it really got put through the ringer a little bit. But when it came to this thing overheating, it didn't work at all. It was fine, that lasted. However, when I came home back into this room, I said, let's just do a test, fresh battery in, about 15 minutes before the whole thing overheated at 5K60 and 4K120. I've read other reports where it is overheating at even lower resolutions. Not sure what that's about, but we'll do some more tests and see how it goes. The Hyper Smooth 4.0 on this, it's really good. It's, it's next level stuff. Hypersmooth 3 on this is absolutely no slouch. Hypersmooth 2 on the 8 and the Hypersmooth on the GoPro Hero 7, those are really good stabilization. It's an algorithm, it's a piece of code that's keeping all of this stable. It's a million miles away from the GoPro Hero 7 stabilization, meaning that it's re phenomenal. The horizon leveling from 22 degrees to 45 degrees where you can tilt the camera, that's a downside. Believe it or not, that can be a downside in the sense that, you know, <sighs> A lot of these shots that I was taking, I was angling the little stick and I was going back and then I forgot about horizon leveling and I was like, ah, 
So if I want to get that rotation on the shot, I'm going to have to manually do it in post. That aside though, you can just turn it off. I really had a bad first impression of the camera just with the whole update thing. But now that I've got to use it, it's snappy, it's punchy, the footage looks good. 4K 120 is great. Now, like anything, it could use a bigger sensor. It could use more bit rate. But depending on what you're doing, and here's the thing, not everybody is on a dirt bike. Not everybody's in a kayak. Not everybody is climbing a mountain. Hi, Stephen Reed. So depending on what you want, this may be ideally the perfect camera for you, or it might not. So just because it's new and shiny don't mean that it'll be great for you. So that's what you have to think about. Even if you just write down a couple of notes and go, this is what I'm going to make videos about. You're like, ah, no, you know, I couldn't shoot a video here, even in a well-lit studio scenario. It's just not capable. But if you're out and about in broad daylight, you can get some incredible looking footage. And here's the thing. If the majority of your audience watch on their phones, they're not going to see any difference. Now, if they're watching on a TV or a desktop computer or a laptop or maybe a big tablet, it might be a different story. So hopefully you guys have got some idea about the GoPro 9 versus the 10 here, what you should get. And look, ultimately, come down to the footage that you have saw. Not a huge difference, but I think if you want the extra oomph, this is the one to go for. Speaking of things to go for, it's the subscribe button there. There's a video there, and I'll see you in the next one.